so you know they want you to be clean so i was like maybe i should say bj instead of blowjob maybe i should say crap instead of shit and i'm sitting here sidebar is bj somehow better than blowjob i think it sounds better i don't know it's a little more pg (laughs) i don't don't know if i I don't know if it's more pg i don't know but Oh no, I lost a wired headphone. If only I had a company like Raycon sponsoring today's episode. Raycon, I need headphones. Hey guys, new episode Unloading Meat, episode 9, and my special guest Adam Harvin from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, This is the first guest on Unloading Meat that is not going to be in the studio today, guys. Uh... Again, he's from Fort Smith. I'm from Tulsa. It's a little bit of a drive, so we wanted to make do, make sure our guests are comfortable. So, you know, we get as many as we can, fit it into the the schedule. And uh, it really, you know, tested Stefano's editing abilities a little bit. But you know what? Fuck him. He's getting paid. So, guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's Unloading Meet with my guest, Adam Harvin. Guys, my next guest comes from the beautiful city of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Give it up for Adam Harvin. What's up, man? All right. Not much. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Unloading Meat. You are my first uh, video interview. Yeah. Yeah. We've had. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I'd like to do one in person so I can play with some of those action figures back there. <laughs> maybe, maybe wear that Power Ranger helmet or something. Uh, only if we get a little kinky. Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do some fighting you know it'll be it'll be fun <laughs> we get in front of a we get in front of a green screen with that power ranger helmet on it'll get weird oh yeah you just see the black eyes <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i got multiple power rangers i have a green ranger i have a white ranger i got a couple of red rangers i have a couple of marvel helmets i mean i got a little bit of everything you look like somebody that have a white power ranger <laughs> yeah i mean i got a green ranger tattoo on my armor dude oh nice <laughs> Yeah, Tommy Oliver was a big influence on me like uh when I was five, dude. He was my hero when I was when I was growing up. Yeah, I can't believe they got away with a, a white power ranger just yeah. running around saying <laughs> white, white power. power. Yeah. There was that col- college humor uh bit about like the the black power and all that stuff. I don't know if you saw that where Zordon was racist. I, I don't know if I've seen that one. It's I pretty probably good. Probably have. Yeah, I you know, I'm right there around that same age where Power Rangers was big for me. So yeah, I, uh, right when it came out. Oh, yeah, probably... I'm still just a kid of heart, man. Yeah, obviously you can yeah. see the the action figures and stuff like that. Do you collect anything? Uh, no, man. Most of, I mean, I've been big into motorcycles and mountain bikes and stuff like that. So, like, most of my money goes into stuff like that. <laughs> motorcycles and mountain bikes. How long have you been into that? Your whole life? I, yeah, I started racing motocross when I was three. So, damn. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how uh, I got into stand up because I just got. St- to the point where I'm so beat up to where I just, it hurts to race and stuff now. So like I'll, every time I go ride, it takes two or three weeks of resting before I can ride again. <laughs> so it's like, I got to get into something else. And I was kind of a fan of, I've always been a fan of stand up my whole life. Um, and then just listen to podcasts and comedians talk on it. I was like, maybe I could do this. And I wrote jokes for two years before I ever got on stage. I was scared to death. I'm, never talked into a microphone publicly at all. And, uh, but I'd been writing jokes for like two years and I was like, maybe I can write jokes for somebody. It turns out that's not a thing. <laughs> Actually, July, yeah, July will be four years. Congrats, so, man. Congrats. Yeah. Uh, nope. so you're in Fort, Fort Smith, man. Uh, what got you into it as far as your first open mic? Uh, was it just friends that you came around? Was it just something like spur of the moment? Like what? No, was I was thing that, like, you know, like, like I said, like, so uh, like I said, I, I was always a fan of it and watching it constantly watching it and everything I, I got, uh, but I never was like, I never thought I would be able to do public speaking or anything like that. But you, I heard Joey Diaz on the Joe Rogan podcast and Christina P 
and they were talking about the, how they were scared to death. Even today, they get nervous and like about shit their pants on stage. And I was like, man, if they're professionals and they're getting nervous and, you know, I was like, it, maybe I could do it being nervous. And, and, uh, I, so I, I wrote jokes for about two years and I had, you know, two or three jokes that I was like, man, I'm, I'm pretty proud of these. Yeah. And so I kind of Facebook stock some of the local comedians and there wasn't really, a uh, open mic scene. There was kind of a, a weird, like pop-up one that changed locations every Friday night. Mm-hmm. And I was like, kind of just creeping that page, watch, you know, watching those. And then one popped up at Harry's downtown. Uh, which Harry's a, downtown, if it's still there. Yeah, it's it's gone now. It's about to reopen to something else, but I doubt we're going to get to do stand up in oh. there again. But there was an I'll, open I'll mic there. Out back. <laughs> yeah, but it was, uh, you know, they start, uh, started an open mic there, and I went down there, and I'd kind of been like Facebook creeping all the comedians, all the local comedians. And just kind of putting funny comments and on their on their posts and stuff like that here and there. And I went down there and I was like, I'm just going to watch. I'm not going to get on stage. And, you know, I was just kind of creeping in the background like I always do at these things because I don't really fit in. I'm kind of a quiet guy. So yeah. when I'm out in public and if, if I don't know anybody, I'm not going to say much. Uh, and I'm not just going to run up and introduce myself usually. So uh, I was just kind of creeping in the background. And then uh, one of the guys recognized me from Facebook and was like, hey, you're the one that's always commenting on this stuff. And I was like, he's, I was like, yeah, that's me. And he's like, are you going up tonight? And I was like, I, I wasn't planning on it. And he's like, uh, he just kind of called me up there. And I, um, you know, I did, you know, three jokes that I still do today um, that were, you know, because nice. they're two years. I mean, they were like two years in development. So I killed for those, but I did like, I had a tagline that went too far <laughs> on a couple of them. And I did it like that for like a year where it was just, it's stepping over the line uh, for most people. And I like, all right, I had to, I had to change the punchline to one of the jokes because it just went too far. <laughs> but uh, I had a like, and I, I felt like I had tunnel vision the first time I went up there. Cause it was a, um, a small stage at the end of the bar and the bar is packed full of people. There's probably 20, 30 people in a small bar and, you know, getting a big laugh on my first time, just right there. I was, I felt like I had tunnel vision, like I was going to black out or something. I was just like, damn, this is weird. It's kind of an out of body experience yeah. the first time. And then you're, you're just hooked. I always I like, well, I'm, Oh, go, go, go ahead. You can do. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> I mean, from that first time I was like, well, I'm doing this uh, from now on. And then, <laughs> I, and I have, I've done, uh, I've done consistently done an open mic once a week, at least for the last three and a half years now. Nice. I haven't man. really That's taken good, much good, time right? off at all. Yeah. And at Harry's was a, it was a, a 10 minute, we did a 10 minute set. And then oh, we'd take wow. 10 minutes starting out, starting out, which I didn't really have. I only had about six or so starting out, but really quickly, I didn't like repeating the same joke over and over every week. Yeah. So I really quickly got to writing and doing, I mean, spent so much time on it. And after the first round of comics go through, we'll have an intermission and then go back and do another like five minute set. And we still follow that model today at like Ben's hookah lounge on Thursdays. We try to, everybody gets a 10 minute set. If there's still time afterwards, we'll start over and just, you'll get, so you get 15 minutes in one night. Nice. I'm I don't have to make a out there. I like it. Yeah, Honestly, it's good. I'll- it's like what hour and a half, two hours from Tulsa? Yeah, it's a little less than two hours for me. Okay. Sometimes when I don't have my kids, I'm gonna have to make a trip out there and just you know hit up a whole bunch and just you can show me show me the yeah yeah the that seats. yeah Ben's Hook Lounge uh, on Thursdays. That's basically all we got going right now, but it's worth the trip because you get some time, you get some stage time, and then we'll try to plan it to where uh, you can come to an open or uh, do uh, my podcast uh, afterwards or before it or something. Oh yeah, you know I'd be down for that. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a podcast whore, man. I'll be on anybody's shit. <laughs> yeah. I, so this is only like my second one besides my own that I've done, but. Uh, well, we're grateful yeah, to have fun. you, man. Oh, yeah. And also, every time I've seen you, you've been a funny motherfucker. So. Oh, thank you. Of course, I'd thank love you. to have you on in here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that first time I met you at the Tulsa Comedy Club, I was like, I was drawn right to you because I was like, I was like, one, I was like, I got to tell this guy he looks just like Zach and me. <laughs> I, yep. I remember you told me that. I gotta tell this guy, and then I, I liked your jokes, your in the material you were doing, and it, like for 
uh, being early into comedy, I was like, yeah, that, that's going to develop into some good stuff for sure. Like I, I, I can see it. Well, thanks man. I, I really appreciate that. And it, I mean, everybody from the scene has been so supportive so far. That's the thing that I just can't take away enough is, and it's honestly, I've talked about it on my past podcast. Like it's kind of why it changed the direction of the show. Uh, yeah. it was just everybody's support. Everybody's not just the support, but the raw talent we have in this Tulsa scene, uh, and Fort Smith and Arkansas scene too. I see Ross yeah. going out to Arkansas. I see a couple of people going out to Arkansas, Arkansas, and I can see a lot of people coming down from Arkansas to Tulsa or sideways. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like a lot of us are like producing our own comedy shows and stuff like that. And nobody wants to see the same comedians in the town every weekend. So it's good to like, we pull people from Little Rock, Northwest Arkansas, Tulsa, come here, do some shows and, and keep it fresh. Yeah. And try to keep a, a consistent comedy scene going and and basically all like right now that's kind of my hub which i don't go to little rock a lot but i work with the little rock guys when we come here uh so it's little rock northwest arkansas which i don't get booked a whole lot northwest arkansas it's a college town it's a younger crowd i'm kind of an old married dude so they don't relate to my material as much but uh, it seems to be don't going good in tulsa though I'm a divorced dad of two, man. Uh, yeah. I got, I got my kids here and I got my house here and uh, I'm in the Bartlesville area. So I'm like 40 minutes yeah. north of Tulsa. Anyway, so I'm out, out of the waste anyway. And yeah. uh, I kind of relate with you a lot because like, you know, you have to go quite a far ways to get to Tulsa and to see this crowd. And like, there's people that, you know, and I'm not knocking anybody in Tulsa at all. I, I mean, they have the, the advantage of there's multiple open mics multiple times a week there that are just really close. Yeah. They can hit up two or three a night and, you know, they can hit up, you know, 10 a week if they really wanted to uh i have a different schedule with my kids and stuff like that and i'm also so far away i had to kind of pick and choose where i go uh just for not just gas you know the gas driving and everything like that but you know just the logistics of it but uh so i had to kind of develop this to be the not just say a backup but also just the alternate plan of both things can kind of feed each other you know what i mean uh podcast i can work on i can bring people from tulsa arkansas anywhere and then also pick and choose my standups as much as I can with within the budget, my time frame, and the kids and stuff like that, and scheduling. Yeah, for me, it's it's just a way to trick my friends into hanging out with me. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, hey, come do this podcast; it'll be awesome. And then, it, but yeah, it's like I just make them watch a shitty Nick Cage movie for a couple <laughs> hours, and it's and it and it's hilarious because a lot of I mean, a lot of them are so bad that it sticks with you. So yeah. it, like. That for a day or two, you're just like, what the hell was that movie even about? Like, it was, that was so stupid. That's how I feel when I watch uh, Darren Aronofsky movies, like the uh, Requiem for a Dream, or uh, just some of his movies where like they stick with you for a couple of days, and you're like, what the fuck did I watch? Like, I'm haunted. By yeah, it. yeah, yeah. There's some Nick Cage ones that are, will do that because it never explains anything. It just leaves everything open ended, and it was just randomness. So tell me about tell me about your your podcast and the show. Uh, go ahead and tell tell the audience the name. So it's Cage Against the Machine podcast, and then I have another one called Playing Your Fools podcast. Where that one I was kind of trying to do more serious stuff. Uh, kind of you know everybody would say more like Joe Rogan style, but I was trying to do it like Ari Shafir's, where you kind of have a theme going into it mm-hmm. and stick to a theme the whole time. But the Cage Against the Machine one. Uh, there's actually a weird story behind it. I almost forgot it until you said something. Uh, but I used to watch Zach Amico's Midnight Spook show quite a bit. Okay. And he watches, you know, he has c- comedians on and they watch a shitty horror movie. And Zach knows he's in, was in film school and everything and works for uh, trauma films. So he knows all kinds of shit about them. And it, it, it's just pretty cool to watch. But I was watching a movie with my wife and it was like a home invasion horror movie, like thriller. And we started at like eight or nine o'clock and she's like, you're going to fall asleep. Aren't you? I was like, no, I'm good. So like 15 minutes in, like these people are broken into this home. They're, they're like tying people up and shit. And I'd nod off. (laughs) And I, I, so I nod off for a second and I wake up and it's another home invasion movie that my wife had switched it to, but it's got Nick cage in it. And I, the the first thing when I wake up is, Oh shit, I didn't know Nick cage was in this. That's weird. (laughs) And my wife didn't know that I fell asleep. Well, I don't know. She didn't say anything. She had to have known that I fell asleep, but 
she didn't say anything when I was like, I didn't know Nick Cage was in this. She just acted like she didn't switch the movies. Yeah. And I was like, along with it. So I was like, I watched the first 15 minutes of one movie that somehow kind of fit in to the last, you know, hour and a half of this other movie. And I was like, this. And so I'm sitting there just out of my, like, completely confused. Like, what the fuck is going on? Why is Nick Cage in this? And, and I was just, it was just kind of a weird deal. And at the end of it, I, I saw the title and I was like, you changed fucking movies. What's going on? And, and she was like, oh yeah, I thought you knew. And I was just like, I guess you can, these Nick Cage movies can just kind of melt together with the other ones and just randomly put him in any movie. And it's, it's not going to be that weird. And I was, and then I kind of looked into how many shitty movies he's made. Quite a bit, quite a bit. It's around 200. Um, and the funny thing is like Rotten Tomatoes, like ranks them like the top 90. So there's like a hundred of them that suck so bad that they're not even on the list. So I have around 200 movies and counting to, to watch on the podcast. I think we're on 39 now. Uh, and some of them probably need to go back and be redone. Uh, there's a couple of them where I got too high and we just stared at the screen for like 30 <laughs> minutes. As one is to do. Yeah, Conrad dosed me with a freaking strong ass edible one time. And oh, I was just, shit. we were just sitting there staring at the screen for 30 minutes. And I was like, oh, yeah, we're supposed to be talking. Do we even hit record? What is record? Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's a couple of them where the video gets screwed up and uh, I corrupted the file the way I tried to transfer and stuff like that. So it's In like there. audio audio only on a video podcast. And you're like, shit. I'm sure you saw the, uh, the Lynn K one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was a bonus the, episode because we talked for like two hours and only like 45 minutes of it got recorded because we double clicked the record button at the start of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to roll with it and just see what happens out of it and what magic you can make from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kinda like, I mean, you just said, you mentioned that, you know, you fell asleep and she put on a, the Nick Cage one and then just happenstance that it turned into you hosting podcasts now about it. Yeah, and I'm trying to, th this year I'm planning on like, I want to try to take it live and I want to do a live podcast in a bar because we do a drinking game around Nick Cage. Uh, you know, anytime he does the Nick Cage whisper, Nick Cage narrating over Nick Cage, uh, Nick Cage overacting, uh, doing a oh, bad a accent. Lot. Yeah, doing a bad accent, which is my favorite. Uh, anytime Nick Cage is uh, making out with a chick that's way hotter than him and compl lot. yeah completely not age appropriate or anything like that so you know sometimes you'll watch these and just get drunk taking shots or taking a drink every time nick cage does something like that you could have multiple I think, models <laughs> yeah if we if we take that into a bar where they serve alcohol that, that bar is going to make some money so I'm, I'm wanting to do a live show i'm just trying to figure out how the the logistics of it I don't think I'm going to be able to put those up on YouTube. I think I'm just going to have to do them live on, on Facebook and call yeah. it good. Yeah. Uh, Facebook or something like that. Just like do clips of it on YouTube or something like that and link to it. Yeah. Because yeah. YouTube copyright strikes the shit out of me on, on those. And yeah. I can't think of a way to record it and have the sound going out to the audience where they can see it and hear the TV Yeah, without it being a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, the logistics of that, it just, I mean, the easiest thing to get you copyright struck just, you don't even think about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very, uh, a lot of people don't even notice how much stuff you have to go around just to, to make sure you can still get your video yeah. monetized. Yeah. And the, the, some of the obscure movies wouldn't be that bad, but if it's a Disney one, which Nick Cage has a lot of Disney movies, um, those are heavily like just barely any background noise at all. Get them copyright strikes. And then the eighties movies all have like legit, uh, soundtracks on them. Oh Yeah. Yeah, so those the like any types of real song will get you big time. It's kind of like whenever uh, you, I don't know if you're a big gamer, but like uh, when the Grand Theft Auto games get re uh, remastered every couple of years or something like that, they always lose tracks because just the the cost of getting those songs licensed again is just so much. Oh yeah, uh, they've done that on uh, on Zach Miko's Midnight Spook Show. They like they he's talked about that a couple times where they've like had to redub a whole movie because they couldn't afford the background music, so it's just terrible music in the background. This episode of Unloading Me is not brought to you by a famous game like Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. I've never played it, but boy, if they sponsor this show, I might give it a try.
Hopefully. It, it, it really depends, Stefano, on what the contract says, like how long I had to play it. I've heard good things. Have you heard good things? Eh, nobody cares about your opinion. Anyway, if you uh, are sick of these fake ads, make sure that you reach out to people like Raid Shadow Legends and uh, tell them to sponsor the show on Muddy Meat, and they'll be replaced soon. Anyway, back to the show. I have expectancy of a porn star is like 29. <laughs> so <laughs> if a 70s porn star is still around, they're doing pretty good. Yeah, word. Or the Ron Jeremy. I mean, I don't know if you've seen him uh, recently. That dude. Uh, he's not doing good, but they said he's not fit to stand trial. Did you see that? I uh, I didn't see that part of it. I saw the picture of him in trial, and like he just let himself go. And dude, he looks completely well, different. Yeah, well, he has narcolepsy, so like he'll just fall asleep mid conversation and stuff. But I think they ruled like I don't think he's fit to stand trial because I don't even think he realized what he's been doing the last ten years. Yeah, like, he's in a lot of, uh, he would hang out at the comedy store and stuff like that. Bobby Lee would talk about that a lot. And yeah, yeah. he'd be passed out in comedy uh, theaters everywhere. Just sleeping in the corner and then yeah. wake up and go grope somebody. There's a there's a show on YouTube. Uh, well, it was on Showtime. I can't remember the name of it, and it's going to bother me. But it was used to be, like, it was like a round table of comedians in Canada. And it was, like, in front of a whole crowd. And, like, you'd have, like, Bo Burnham on there, Ray Romano. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. And, like. Ron Jeremy was always in the crowd sleeping. Just they'd always be like, "Oh, there's Ron," <laughs> and he just in there, just randomly passed out in the crowd. Nice. Yeah, at least he wasn't, you know, touching anybody inappropriately. Yeah, yeah, that was and, and what his and apparently what the dude's probably genius. His mom like was someone who broke the Enigma code, and like his mom was apparently a super genius. Oh, really? Yeah his his mom was like. Uh, yeah, broke like the Enigma machine. Like, oh damn! Yeah, like was one of the people working on it. That somehow That's, gave him like a fourteen-inch cock. Uh, I think that might be the Jewish thing. I don't oh. know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, they were onto something. Oh, you do you remember the death match? Uh, the uh, celebrity death match? match. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there. That's yeah. That uh, they had a Ron Jeremy one uh, episode that was pretty funny. I wish they, I mean, they tried bringing that back, but it didn't, it wasn't nowhere near what it was originally. Uh, no, it was, it was weird. The, uh, I remember, uh, Kenny G being on that episode or on an episode and like he took off his tattoo. I think he was facing Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers and yeah. he took off his tattoo or shirt and he had a whole tattoos, but it was all like candy canes and like gumdrops and stuff like that. <laughs> they did one. I think one of my favorite ones was, uh, there was a NASCAR one. <laughs> I forgot. It was like Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt were fighting. It was hilarious. I just remember Stone and Cole being on there quite a bit. Yeah. And they made the video game. The video game came out like 10 years later, and it was... I don't even know how they got the licenses for some of those actors, but holy crap. I think it's like South Park. If you do a poor enough impression, it's it, it, you can get by yeah. with par- well, I mean, parody. I don't know if you've seen what, what happened on the latest episode of South Park. They're getting sued. Yeah, I saw that, but I, I, I mean, it's South Park. I, they got to be able to get away with it. I know, and just the irony that they're getting sued by Megan and Harry over that episode. I don't know if you watched the episode. Yeah, so, I watch. Oh, yeah, I watch. I've seen every episode of South Park multiple times. That irony, uh, since the irony, why they're suing them, and just that the, the subject of that episode is hilarious. I, I had a joke about South Park uh, that I kind of had to burn. Uh, it's actually on my Instagram. If you, if anybody wants to go to Adam is not funny and look at it, it's there's one that has. Uh, a three minute Burt Crasher bit, and then it has my mine back to back. And I did that so, like, people realize, like, I didn't intentionally steal this. And it's not even the bit, the, the premise is completely different, but the punchline is almost exactly the same. So I was like, shit, I can't do this joke anymore. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out how to rewrote it, rewrite it. But it's about learning that, uh, the, the word dildo from South Park. And I was like, at the time, I had no idea what a dildo was, but I was like, that is a funny word, and my dad's going to love this. <laughs> so, it was, but, so it's about me breaking out a, a, you know, a dildo in the middle, calling my little brother a dildo and thinking my dad's going to love it, and you know, about wrecking the truck from having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could see that happening. Just, I mean, yeah. dildo is such a word that, man, you don't just throw that out in everyday well, conversation. <laughs> I don't think it was the word itself. I think it's like how Shock. the fuck did he? It was like how the fuck did he learn this word? Is yeah. that was like <laughs> what the fuck is he been up to? <laughs> yeah, so it was like this is this is weird. 
yeah, th- th- it's about how you learn the word, not not the word itself. Yeah. So, uh, besides the the motocross and that got you into the comedy and kind of segue into that, what what other things as far as aspect? Like you say, you don't collect or anything. Do you do any uh, gaming or anything? Uh, yeah. I mean, here lately, I have the I haven't had much time to do it. I what when I, at my old job that I had, um, I had plenty of time. I was doing a lot of Call of Duty and stuff like that, and uh, but not big. My little brother's super into gaming. He was streaming for a while and had a, had a channel and all that. Uh, but uh, like when I have, I've got three kids uh, running around. So uh, my old job was at night, so I could would get home from work. They're all sleep. I could game. Yeah. But now I can't really do that. <laughs> what? So what? What? does Adam do in the spare time when he's not writing for material and stuff like that and doing stand up or doing ridiculous Nick cage podcasts? What is a daily hobby? Uh, or what, what do you do in your off time, man? Uh, so, I mean, now it's, you know, I'll, I'm all constantly taking my kids to stuff and stuff like that, but mostly if I'm not writing or working on the podcast or comedy, I, I'll, I try to work out. It's been a struggle for me because I'm so busted up over the years. Uh, I used to be in really good shape my whole life. And then this last year I've gained like 50 pounds because of just stress from the job that I had. Yeah. And so I'm trying to get that back uh, and get back in shape, which that's kind of a constant thing. Like I wasn't too worried about it, but I still don't know how I'm going to pr- be perceived uh, as a stand up if I'm get back in shape. <laughs> so I yeah, like, I don't know if that's good or bad for my comedy. I mean, career. there are body types. I mean, it, it, it's just one of those things where you like, you're kind of in that middle spot right now where like you're just oh, I'm kind of <laughs> yeah I'm yeah I'm the I'm the you can tell that I used to be an athlete and I'm kind of fit kind of fat situation leaning more towards the fat now in this last <laughs> year but but yes yeah, so you can still tell that I used to like and that's the thing too is like everybody that I ran into from like high school is like they're everybody's super amazed because I was always a quiet guy and everybody thought I was really mean because I was quiet and, you know, I was a really good football player. I did discus and, um, you know, so I did football and track and did great in both of them. And I was in good shape and everything. But being quiet makes you kind of seem like an asshole. Once they talk to you, they're like, oh, I thought you were going to be an asshole. I was like, no, I just, I don't talk to people unless I actually know them. <laughs> in the vacuum of a personality, people put in their own thoughts. Yeah. And I think I get that. I mean, in the comedy scene too. I just like, and it's, it is weird. Cause like, there's not, I've raced motorcycles in multiple dis- disciplines and I, I did stunt riding for years too. So um, there's, you know, I've been in a bunch of different scenes and like never fully fit into any of them. Cause it's like, even like when I was racing motocross, I'm a giant muscled up guy doing motocross. It's weird. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's why I never really got into the the motocross so much that just because I was a big dude. I mean, I was, I was a big kid growing up. I mean, I've always been a fat kid. Uh, I mean, I, I ballooned as I got older too, of course. But uh, stress and you know the divorce and stuff like that it kind of just piles on. So I yeah. I am trying to lose weight now. Uh, I'm down actually about seventy pounds this past year. Uh, yeah, just trying to work on it a little bit as I can. I'm not doing too much, and I'm also just gotten into a car wreck, so I'm going through MRIs and CAT scans for my shoulder, and my arm, and stuff. So. Nice. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, that's fun stuff. I think I would glow in the dark um, eventually with all the x-rays that I've had in CAT scans. So. Yep. Yeah, I have to do an I, MRI. I'm actually doing an MRI tomorrow uh, at 8 o'clock at night. Yeah, I was like, the every time I see an x-ray technician put on that lead vest, and I'm like, this is probably x-ray 200 and something for me. <laughs> um, well, my, my problem is, like, I'm severely claustrophobic. And CAT yeah. scans and MRI machines caused me to have full on panic attacks. Yeah. So, yeah. I tried one last Monday and got a, got into the MRI machine and we lost last like five minutes. And that was me like shaking, trembling, like, sh- like just completely just drenched in sweat. And she's oh, like, you was... around too much. You got to, mo- we got to redo it. I'm like, Nope, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. And so I had no... me. <laughs> yeah. My CAT scans, I was usually strapped. I was strapped to a headboard, so I couldn't move. That, uh, that, that's what they did. They, they strapped <laughs> me to that when they put that collar on my neck, it just immediately locks me in. I can't do it. Yeah, I have a, I have a like a fight or flight kind of thing. Or if I get held down or something, I freak the fuck out. 
which as a big guy makes everybody think it's like Godzilla coming through the fucking town or something like that. Uh, yeah, I woke up from I had a sinus surgery a couple of years ago and uh, I woke up with a fat like the, the doctor goes, how are you feeling? I was like, the hell's wrong with my lip? It, I think that doctor punched me in the mouth while, I was, <laughs> while they were sedating me because like I had a fat lip like I just got punched in the mouth. And I was like, this has nothing to do with the surgery. Apparently they had a hard time putting the trach tube down my throat. Oh, wow. That's I have, I have like a lip. Uh, I, apparently they got rough when they were putting the tube in my mouth or whatever, or they raped me while I was asleep. I don't know, but I have a tiny Never mouth. You <laughs> sleep at night. I have a, yeah, apparently I have a tiny mouth and a huge neck. So I'd be a terrible gay guy. Yeah. That'd be a horrible grinder profile to come across. Yeah. <laughs> Not impressive at all. <laughs> and see i never i never pursued the athletic i mean obviously but uh, <laughs> uh i never had that like that job that just you know i was really good at or really could find my knack at until i hit like cell phones i was really good at like sales and commission sales stuff like that for cell phones i worked in the cell phone industry for like 12 years uh with all the different carriers and stuff like that and i was good at that i just didn't like i mean i was at one point i was up to like district manager level and i was managing stores between louisiana texas and oklahoma and traveling between those three states doing multiple runs a week i mean it was exhausting it was fun i was good at it but it was just uh, especially going from like management to like district manager or going down to like the area manager level and stuff like that like you see the disconnect between like the different sides of like like the retail side versus like the upper management side and how they treat each side and like each side has a different view of the other side you know what i mean it's like you're kind of oh yeah and, and it's the like, car, car dealership it's a big time sales uh, treats the freaking parts and service operations like shit. Yep. And uh, I mean, it's everybody always thinks the other side does a, the, a shit job, and it's just like, okay, yeah. well, we're all gonna go down overall. If everybody thinks everybody else is shit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a very cutthroat business. Sales is and commissions, of course. Uh, so it's not for everybody. I was good at it for a while, and just you know, had some fallouts with some different individuals and. You know, things happen. <laughs> life thing, life stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. I used to, I used to have a joke about like, about that. It was like, get, you want to get good enough at your job where like, they're not going to fire you for saying something stupid, but they're not going to promote you because you might say something stupid, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of be in that nice middle area is where I've tried to be for a long time. Like if they're, they're not going to let me be in charge of people, but you know, they're not going to get rid of me for saying some stupid stuff. Just some quiet me. that I can just do my job and no, and not make a fuss. Just, how's it going with the comedy so far? What are you thinking of it? Uh, I'm, I'm really digging it. I'm loving the scene. I, I honestly feel like I found my place between the stand up and the podcasting. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for years. Uh, podcasting specifically is something that got me through COVID. Uh, and I mean, just watching podcasts like people like Bert and Tom with two bears or especially specifically Bobby Lee, Bobby Lee is a huge inspiration for me. Uh, those guys seeing them trapped during COVID and just needing outlets that yeah. really kind of inspired me. I'm like, man, they can, if they're putting all that they can into podcasting just to get an outlet. Uh, yeah, it's that's still funny. And they still watch it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying like, yeah, during COVID I had, you know, I had a job where I was consuming about 40 hours of podcasting. I had, you know, I was driving and I had my headphones on uh, when I was working. So, I mean, I, I was doing about 40 hours of podcasting. So I was consuming a ton of it. And it, you know, it helps, uh, you know, something in their conversation a lot of times will trigger, uh, be like, oh, that something like that happened to me. Yeah. And then I'll just start writing a joke on that joke with Bert kind of crashed. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's going to happen. You're going to have some overlap on there, especially if you, you consume a lot. Yeah. I mean, and there's also going to be ideas where you just, it's, it's kind of like the Simpsons already did it kind of thing where like he's going to find your own in it oh, yeah. uh, perspective on it. And occasionally you're going to find something that just clashes. It happens. <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, and a lot of my jokes do that where I kind of ride that line, the fine line between uh, like, they, I won't cross that line to where they can be mad at me, but you'll see during my sets, like the whole room will be paying attention and completely quiet because they think I'm going to go there. Like, they think I'm gonna screw up and say something like this asshole's about to about to get canceled Man, and then I'll like, walk it back. You yeah. with their expectations. Yeah. And I, a lot of my jokes do that where I try to talk about some serious subjects, uh, but try to make them funny and and 
I, I like doing that. I don't know why. I know I've had other comedians be like, I don't know why you pick these subjects to be funny, but it's, I mean, the taboo stuff is what I find funny. It's like, it's, I, for some reason, I've tried to write clean jokes. I can't do it because, like, I'll, I'll be like, I can't expand on them at all. I'll have something that like, that's kind of funny. But then when I try to expand on them, like, it's just not funny to me. It's kind of what I go through um, with some of mine. I mean, you've heard some of my stuff. I mean, I talk about some of my past, my, you know, my, the, the rape stuff and all that stuff that happened with me. And, uh, I, mean, I try to find the humor in this, some of the dark shit that happened in my life. Uh, uh, Roscoe talked on his episode, like, you know, we're all broken toys in the comedy industry. Uh, yeah. All of us have had trauma. All of us have had shit that, you know, affected us. It, uh, for me personally, it's trying to like turn that on its head and try to find the joke in the worst possible shit that happened in my life. And if I can laugh at it, hopefully other people find it funny too. And it's easier to talk about. But- and, and that's one, one of the reasons I am quiet. Like when I go to a new, like, like, we'll go to like my wife's family for Christmas or Thanksgiving or something like that. And they'll be talking about something that I know a ton about, you know, I'm, I am kind of a nerd. Like I read, I do, I read history. I read all like the very significant books and stuff like that from the history. And, and uh, you know, I, I love Thomas soul and, and, I so I know a lot about that stuff, but when I just sit there and have to bite my lip when we get into those conversations, because I know like these people are just going to think I'm crazy. They're not going to understand any of these concepts. Yeah. Oh, so, I, I know. I, I I have family members that don't speak to me anymore <laughs> because of a fight we had at Thanksgiving over yeah things like that. It just you know at a certain point it, it blew up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, family. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's. I mean. I've been making the trip to Tulsa quite a bit more because, because like I get along with some of the Tulsa comics. I think some of them, uh, my comedy is a little bit more appreciated there. Um, Fort Smith is, is just a terrible place for comedy. Like, I don't know. We have one good venue. Like it seems that people are showing up, but I do a lot of comedy in bars, which is usually a problem. Yeah. But they make for terrible, terrible audiences sometimes. <laughs> And, and I, like, you know, I'm more of a bar comic and uh, some of the other comedians uh, in the area don't, don't like doing them there. Yeah. You just kind of got to go into some of them knowing like, this is going to be a shit show. Yeah. But uh, you got to look at it as like, I'm getting my, getting my reps, make something out of it. And sometimes those wild uh, hecklers and shit like that, that you run into at these bars on Garrison and Fort Smith or, it makes it fun, even though it is like screwing up your stand up. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm trying to, to dabble and go outside my comfort zone. Uh, I'm sure you've met Trash, right? Yeah, I haven't met him, but I know who you're talking about. Okay. Uh, he reached out to me and uh, asked if I wanted to be in the uh, the roast battle that's coming up on this Friday. I think I've yeah. on Instagram, uh, which by the time this airs, it'll already have happened. But like, I've never done a roast battle or anything, but I was like, you know what? It sounds like fun. Fuck it. Let's just, you know, let's go for it. Yeah. I think I was going to try to do, we tried one at the Grove uh, in Lowell and I was like, I'll, I'll be a judge. I ended up not doing it, but I was like, I'll be a judge, but I don't want a roast battle for one. I mean, people love taking shots at me. I mean, that's, yeah. uh, and that's uh, the thing, like I have a whole segment, we have a whole segment here on unloading me. I mean, yeah. I'm out roasting and it's one of those things where it's just like, I grew up with it. So I, it's, it's, it's going to happen to me. So I'm used uh, to it. Oh, that's, <laughs> I mean, I'm open book. <laughs> yeah. My, I mean, I grew up with, and that's probably one of the reasons I'm a comedian too. It's like, so my dad and his two brothers were close. We all, you know, we all raced motocross and stuff like that. And we were always together and it's, and <sighs> It's why uh, one of the reasons I'm quiet is because if you open your mouth and say something stupid, you're going to get roasted. So if I was going to say something, I'd make sure it was going to be good. Yeah. So, yeah, I would, I'd only like open my mouth to roast somebody uh, like for, when I was a kid, because, you know, my dad had his two brothers. I had my two brothers. If anybody said something wrong, they're jumping on you. Yeah. I just I, I, I'm looking forward to it, man. I think it's going to be a new challenge for me. and. It, just something to, to to put on the resume of things I've tried and hope yeah. I get better at it. The good ones are always the ones that you do research on. <laughs> yeah. That's the hardest part. Like I, I got the list of names of people that like uh, are going to be there and I've kind of, you know, Facebook creeped them a little bit, but oh, there's only like two or three of them that I've actually met. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's going to be a fun yeah, experience. You call, 
you call their you call their friends from middle school and find out they hit their pants on the school bus or something, and that the roast battle's over. Yeah. <laughs> I also loved. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've watched a lot of the Comedy Central roasts. Did you ever see Jonah Hill on the? I can't remember which one he did, but uh, Jonah Hill was on a roast. I don't think I've seen. It's probably the James Franco one. I, I don't Fran- think it I've is seen the James that, Franco yeah. one. I need to watch that one. I love those roasts, but. Uh, I bet it is. Uh, I mean, my favorite freaking uh, Seth MacFarlane kills those damn things. He does. Which I don't know if he's right, but uh, that Lisa Lampanelli, who was, mm-hmm. uh, when she was huge, which I guess she's a motivational speaker now, but he really? had one where, yeah, but uh, Seth MacFarlane had one on her. It was like her, her pussy's like Clorox too. It's safe on watts, but really meant for coloreds. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's one of my... <laughs> I just loved, like Jonah Hill did like the opposite. He did like the compliment. We're like, oh, that was so good, man. When you got me, it was just, it was just so good. And he just did that for his entire roast. Oh, really? And it was fucking hilarious. Just the way he nice. did it is he just undercut everybody's shit. He just took the piss out of everybody's by doing that. When I, uh, Because I haven't seen it and we're talking about Jonah Hill, I'm having a hard time picturing it. Is it fat Jonah Hill? Or uh, is, this, is this is this like, funny it, people? It's, it's skinny, this... it's skinnier Jonah Hill. Because <laughs> like funny people, Jonah Hill, uh, like that doesn't even look like the same person from yeah. like uh grandma's boy. You're Especially like, if you see him now. If you see him now with his bleach blonde hair and stuff. Yeah, that from him now to grandma's boy, that's that's two different people. Yeah, people don't people forget Jonah Hill's like the fat version of Christian Bale. Or, like every movie he does <laughs> different yeah. dramatic, dramatic different, body well, transformation. Yeah, that's nuts. Because then, like, even in Moneyball, he was big. I'm trying to think. Moneyball was like in, he was the Brad Pitt movie where he's like, oh yeah, 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 the the mathematician dude or whatever. Yeah. The yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, I would definitely give it a look. Uh, that one was really good. Uh, Andy Sternberg did us did one, and he did another kind of similar thing where he was just stupid. I mean, he's always Andy Sternberg. Mm-hmm. But he did a roast where, like, he just basically complimented and like their jokes, and then did a shitty joke after it. Yeah, Zach Amigo kills it on those roast battles. I don't know if you've ever seen those. I haven't seen uh, his roast battle. I have seen him on a couple things, like as far as like the uh, gank fest and stuff like that. Yeah, he. Uh, I think they do roast masters in New York, um, and really like one of the finalists, if not you know the winner on those things. Nice. He's just so, he's so good at it. So. What is your goal with the comedy? Like, well, as far as like in a year from now, where do you see yourself? Or what, what, what's, what's the be all? So right now, I mean, the way I'm looking at it is I want just to improve and get better at stand up. I really want to get to the point where I, I like there's comedians like big Dre. And I saw, I just saw Mo, Mo Alexander where those guys are undeniable. I mean, you can like there, I have seen people in the crowd, try to not laugh at their jokes and they eventually win them over and go directly at those people. And I just kind of, I want to get to the point where I'm undeniable like that, where like, I know like my material is good on its own. I need to improve with the showmanship of my stand up and stuff like that. I need to get better at presenting it, you know, talking better. Part of that is because I have fucking CTE. <laughs> so I know, <laughs> Uh, I know like I got to if I haven't slept or something like that, or I'm tired or anything like it affects me quite a bit on the stage. So yeah. Yeah. And I I've got to get past that. And like, I prepare big time before I go on stage. I like, I'll try to, I'll try to get a workout in, try to, you know, uh, I won't eat for like six hours before I do stand up. That's about what I do. Yeah, I don't eat before I go. Yeah. And so I try to be prepared for stuff like that, but, um, Right now, I'm just I'm trying to get better, try to develop more material and um, just uh, I'm wanting to make the transition like kind of, you know, hopefully I'm at the 10 year mark. I'm undeniable um, and I approach everything like that. I don't want to get any opportunity too soon. Yeah. Um, and it was the same way with fighting and, and stuff like that. It was like you don't want to get thrown in there and be over your head, especially in fighting your, your ass kicked and comedy. You're just going to look like a jackass. Um, you might get some laughs, uh, but I don't want to get an opportunity to be on TV or something like that and just bomb. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't have the envisioning of like going to kill Tony in my first time. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I would love to do Kill Tony because I oh, have yeah. a couple one minute bits where I'll, it, that'd be pretty fun. I mean, it's admirable. To, 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 I mean, I love the part where you talked about oh, you didn't want to like take an opportunity before you're ready for it because, I mean, that shows wisdom behind your years just right there, man. I mean, that's a very admirable thing to say. Yeah, I'm, I'm, people I'm, will actually be able to stop themselves and kind of admit that or even acknowledge that. Yeah, I'm trying to be a shithead philosopher, you know. <laughs> To take kind of take some of these deep deep meanings and and the serious subjects uh but put the shithead spin on them, yeah. you know because that's a, that's why i mean like which i stole it from zach amico too i'm a big fan of his but the adam is not funny as you know as it comes from you know the zach is not funny but i kind of identified with that with that a little bit because you know when i first told people that i'm doing stand up they're like you know but you're not funny and i was like yeah but i'm a smart ass and Apparently that works pretty well for writing jokes. Yeah, because like I've always been a smartass, you know, I've been a shithead. I've and, always thought that too. Like, when you're like, I want to do stand up, and somebody's like, but you're not funny. Like, okay. Oh, uh, I roasted my mom. I roasted my mom for that when the first time when we sat down with my brothers to eat at a restaurant, and she was like, uh, she was like, what do you even talk about on stage? I was like, mostly my shitty mother, but you know. <laughs> 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 like oh my god yeah my but family, she yeah. did she did get me my mom uh i was doing a show at a vfw in Muldrow, oklahoma and i had no idea my mom was coming and she walked in like one minute into my set and i had to stop the show and announce my mom that she's coming in oh shit and, and i was like uh this is like this is the first time she's ever seen me do stand up so buckle up mom this is gonna we're yeah, in my for a treat my family hasn't uh made the trip yet for the stand-up yet uh, that's gonna be a shock. Uh, sometime soon. I mean, I, I, I they've seen the podcast. They've seen what I discuss on here. Uh, we haven't discussed it outside of that, but you know, the, <laughs> they're at least aware of what like my humor is. Man, the I, the family members that did see me do stand up early on, like I want to drag them back now and be like, all right, because uh, I filmed everything back then, and I, every once in a while I'll go back there and see me do stand up. And when I say we first started doing like 10 minute sets, those jokes are usually about five minutes now because <laughs> I'm like, go and like cut out the feeler or I'm just not mumbling and stuttering as much. Yeah. And I'm like, that used to be a, a you know, when I wrote that joke, I, I consider that a, like an eight minute bit. And now it's like 445 or five minutes or something like that. And I'm like, damn. I was like, what the hell was I doing on stage for those other four or five minutes? I was Dude, like, it goes by so fast. Uh, it does sometimes if you're doing good if you're doing bad will, it can feel like forever sometimes <laughs> it does like it i had a uh a fuck up on and i had it on video and i did i screwed up at the loony bin the other day a little bit i did a joke i did one line out of order and came back to it and then had to repeat myself to get back into the joke and when you're on stage and you do that it feels like it's 30 seconds or something yeah, and then when you watch it back on video, you're like, "Oh, that was like three or four seconds. That wasn't that big of a deal." Yeah. But yeah, I'm usually in my head going, "Fuck, I fucked up." Oh, damn. I liked uh, Tom Segura talked about it during a conversation I think with Bert, where like he'll do like five minutes or ten minutes, and then like he'll take that five minutes and they'll try to in intentionally rip it from where it's supposed to be in his set, and then place it randomly somewhere else and see if he can make it work. Yeah. And he loves just challenging that, like take each yeah, bit of segments and just randomly mix them to see if he can like do the the transitions. Yeah, I've never done it on purpose, but yeah, I've, yeah. But and like, well, I, and I think that like down the line, that's something that like we might have to work on the reps. I mean, me personally, it's something like, I'm like yeah, I can see that being very beneficial once I start getting well, that time in. I'll tell you where I've been in that situation is uh, I've showed up to a few open mics and there's been like three or four comics. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Hey, you're supposed to, we're supposed to fill an hour and a half spot here. So you get like 30, 45 minutes of jokes. Yeah. And I usually, so I have mine set up right now. They're basically, I have three different 15 minute sets that I do. Sometimes those hard transitions or I do try to make smooth transitions in them uh, when I'm writing them. But when you get thrown in that situation, I'll just freaking hard, yeah. hard said, well, yeah. Hey, fellow hipsters and people that have culture or something, I'm Jared Ralphie Allen, host of Unloading Meat, and we need sponsors for the show. If you identify with 
this fucked up hat I'm wearing, these shitty tattoos, or any other cultural references that are behind me, reach out to your favorite sponsors and tell them to sponsor the show and let him meet. Now, back to acting like I wasn't impressed by anything. I wish this podcast could be on vinyl. Yeah, I did. That's at Looney Bin. I was sitting there thinking, so, you know, they want you to be clean. So I was like, maybe I should say BJ instead of blowjob. Maybe I should say crap instead of shit. And I'm sitting here. Sidebar is BJ somehow better than blowjob? I think it sounds better. I don't know. It's a little more PG. I don't, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if it's more PG. I don't know, but <laughs> that's the thing is I have no Bless idea you. where these. That's a, I, like I'm a shithead. I have no idea where these lines are. Where Dude, these I'm club owners? Well, yeah, the like the uh, you know, the Grove is like the one the comedy club where you know I haven't been worried about. They used to have an open mic there uh, on Wednesdays, and that's the one where like I'm trying to trying to get booked, try to do, try to stay clean, try to get booked to open for the, the uh, traveling headliners and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, he's always like, you're, you know, you're too dirty to book. Or he's like, I like what you're doing, but you're, you're too dirty to book. And then I'll see another comic that he books, go up there and, you know, talk about something crazy. And I'm just like, I have no idea where the freaking line is on this. Yeah. What, what do I do? And see, so that, like, that, that's also where like, cause I took, it took about a year, year and a half to kind of put together this podcast, the studio and everything like that, building it and like just kind of concepting what this whole idea was going to be. Um, about a year and a half is what it come on. And then eventually got Stefano on here and he's the guy that helps the editing and all that stuff. And, you know, does pretty much everything behind the scenes. Uh, I really wanted to have this as a way to control it because I need something to fall back on in case I got in that situation where they're like, you can't do this. You can't do that. I got to have somewhere where I am me. Yeah. Well, I can get it getting, I, I got to have something. You got to get in touch. Yeah, you got to get in touch with your fans somehow. Um, that's, I mean, my fan base, I have no idea what it's going to end up looking like because, it, but right now it tends to be like, you know, middle aged married couples love my, you know, my stand up. And uh, that's because I've been married for 12 years. Um, and that's the thing too is like, I, and I was talking to the owner of the Grove. I was like, yeah, I mean, all my material is about my wife. And having sex with my wife and stuff like that. What's more Christian than that? You know, we. <laughs> no, that was, I mean, I'm not talking about banging skanks and hookers and stuff like that. I, you know, yeah. it's you know, it's it's just my wife. <laughs> well, it's like I had a comedian once that, and I'm not going to name names or anything. Um, told me that you may not want to talk about the rape material, which I understand rape can be a sensitive is- issue and topic. I completely understand where they're coming from. However, I was raped, and I have jokes about my experience. Uh, yeah i i I think i'm coming from a con a a comedic way that's gonna be okay and it's not like i'm like pro rape (laughs) uh the humor's there the intent's there and i'm not bashing anybody i'm very selective with how i talk about it but at the same time i i do kind of have to process it because i don't think that the outrage is actually justified with somebody's not actually offended (laughs) yeah i have so i have a joke where it's kind of insinuated and I change my line depending on where I'm at. Um, and so I don't use the word rape, but um, I'd say like, Hey, this date's probably going to end in sex, whether you want it to or not. Yeah. And, uh, and I also, or, and sometimes I'll change it to, you should probably assume that your date's not real big on consent. If I'm in, a, if I'm in like Northwest Arkansas or a college town or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't use the word either way, but uh, one's a little like not as harsh as the other one. I could probably get away with doing both, but well, it's like I had I one. Know. Like, uh, I'm sure you've seen. Like, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna say the name because he's not here. Uh, but uh, there's a bartender at one of the bars that uh, we do open mics at, and he has hair similar to mine, like as far as like pull back. And, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And I had the idea that like you know I'm like the multiverse version of him, but the only drinks I can make has roofies in it. <laughs> so what's the next movie you guys got going coming on the Nick Cage? So I, I have Birdie downloaded. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that. I haven't seen Birdie. Um, it's an 80s movie, and it's actually supposed to be a really good movie. 
Okay. From the trailer and the the cover, I thought I was like, this is gonna be stupid. It's gonna be hilarious, but apparently it's a good movie. Um, it, but it's the guy from Full Metal Jacket, Matt. Uh, damn it, I can't think of his name. Uh, but Joker from Full Metal Jacket okay. is the, is in there with Nick Cage. And I, but some of these '80s movies are fun. Uh, we did. Uh, Valley Girl was probably one of the best episodes we've I haven't done. Seen Valley Girl so long. I watched that with my mom when I was like a real little. Like, Dude, the, da- something like that. the dad in that it looks so, is so much like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> I mean, they're dressed the same and everything. It's freaking hilarious. And he's I mean, been getting away with a lot of shit. Oh yeah, I mean for sure. That's uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that you can't get away with now we watched uh me and sam price watched uh was it amos and andy i think is uh one with uh samuel l jackson and nick cage mm-hmm. and I was, we knew that i was like i knew this was going to be a good one when we first turned it on and uh at the top there's a blackface warning <laughs> and we're like, apparently they put blackface warnings on movies now nice and we were so me and sam were sitting there waiting for this blackface the whole time and all they were talking about was like the swat team had black on their face oh geez <laughs> that's it <laughs> yeah wow that, that was the blackface warning uh and i d- nick cage did do it later on but I, I i mean that's all it was it wasn't like red lips and all that stuff it's like there's that blackface scene in mad men i don't know if you ever watch mad men there's the there's a famous scene in that no i haven't seen that one yeah they go to like this party and it's set in the 60s and like the, the guy hosting it has a blackface dance or nice yeah uh even though it's set in the 60s and you know even back then, like they're showing you like this is this is fucked up to have back then but i, gu- I cool. guarantee that act the actor that did it was like you know what leave me out of the credits <laughs> Just- um it's the guy that plays uh uh howard stark in the mcu oh shit. Plays Tony's dad yeah yeah it's that guy i would be like don't you know leave leave me out of the credits on this one i, I, I don't need you can pay me but you know leave my name off of everything it's like it's like there's no way they would ever make Tropic Thunder now. No, I mean there's just no way it would, even like it's what ten years ago, or whatever. There's just no way this climate would ever even be accepting of that in theaters. It, the wild thing is, you can't make Tropic Thunder now, but you can make cuties. So, <laughs> acceptable. Um, yeah, yeah that 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 really that that hit me right here yeah <laughs> it's like i felt I, that <laughs> dude i as as a comedian i kicked that back and forth on whether i should watch that movie for months because i was just like there's a joke there I, if i can know there's a joke there yeah but i'm going to hell if i watch that movie i don't know <laughs> like that's like I'm it's not like even, it's like I have i'm not even bit. religious but i think i have that coming <laughs> It's like I have this bit, and I, I honestly haven't told it on stage because I don't want to go over. But like, okay, so this is a true story, and I guess it's a perfect time for a podcast we can share here. I yeah. had a, I, I will assume she's like fifteen or sixteen year old girl, flash me at Walmart accidentally. <sighs> like I'm walking into Walmart, and we're by the shopping carts, and I'll set the scene because like this redneck family, and she's like in sweatpants and a t-shirt, and the mom has like no bra on, and just the tits are hanging out in this white beater. And they're yeah. just having this trashy conversation, and she says something, and the 16 or 15 year old girl just goes, pull, and she just pulls her shirt up out of her, her uh sweatpants to kind of get them out of the sweatpants. Oh yeah. But she had nothing underneath, and I just called pull full tip nips. And I was just like, What do you do in a situation? And like the mom saw me, like everybody knew I saw. Yeah. It's like, how am I at fault? Like I didn't Oh yeah. The the uh, thing the things that go down at Walmart, dude. So at my old job, I was working nights, and I, I a lot of times I'd go to Walmart at like 4.30 in the morning yeah. on my way home from work, and one day I, I went into Walmart, and I'm walking out, and from behind me, this lady goes, don't you try anything, and I turned around, and I was like, it is a like four-foot-tall, like troll-looking lady, and she had one of those uh, keychains that have like the spike oh, the uh, brass things. The like brass knuckles that are made out of like 3D printed ones or whatever. She's like, don't try anything. I was like, man, I'm in front of you, man. What are you talking about? I was like, I'm clearly not following you. You're behind me. And she was like, yeah, I just got to be careful out here. And I was like, I don't think you do. I don't think, I think you're fine. Uh, I don't, I don't think anybody's following you. Um, 
It was like, I, I don't know how to start that story that I, uh, on my end, like, uh, like uh, every time I try to start that story, I'm like, uh, so does it make me a pedophile if, and I'm like, I don't want to start that story on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and then like my, my, my ending of it is basically like, I, I just asked her, I was like, how do you already have stretch marks? Oh yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. That's a tough one. Which is yeah. the first thing to mind when I saw her. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just that. Yeah. That, um, yeah, the accidental one there, which I mean, you don't even have to accidentally see them now. I mean, they're the there's like a drive by well, nip slip. Yeah, the and it, shit. I remember we had uh, I had this friend that I went to went to school with in like middle school, and uh, this is a freaking terrible one. But uh, the the rumor was that she married a dude, got him to pay for a boob job, and then divorced him like a month later. Oh. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, she definitely had the boobs. But and it was like there was a waiting list to, to stay the night at this kid's house. <laughs> it was like fucking Stacy's mom. Yeah, there's there's a waiting list to stay at his, at this kid's house. But yeah, I stayed the night at his house one time, and she bent over to the take out the trash, and I was like, "That's like wearing a tank top," and I was like, "Wow." And then you grab grab a picture of his mom and some lotion and go like. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't actually. I didn't actually. Yeah. I didn't actually do it, but I was. I was just like, all right, man. I, I was. We're sitting there playing video games. Yeah, like we didn't. Uh, I didn't actually do it, but just as a joke, I picked up a picture frame and some lotion. And went to walk towards the bathroom. He's like, Fuck you, man. <laughs> Having a hot mom's got to be tough. It's got to be tough. Yeah, I mean, Especially yeah, being your the, friends breakfast the next morning when they come down from the bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, middle middle school, the hot mom would be tough. It, were, it, it really would, man. It'd be kind of like a. It's like the the hot the oh man. Can you imagine having a hot mom that's also the teacher? Um. Uh, and then the students yeah, that, that's her. Then you're like, mom, don't. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I mean, I'm there was definitely some of that going on in my school. There was um, a lot of that going on in my school. So. Talked about it in the first episode. Our, our basketball but, team, our coach got arrested. Well, I don't know how many how much of it was going on on the bad side, but on the we had the cool side on lockdown. I mean we, <laughs> we I mean we had a we had a, one of the best football teams in the state. And so there's a bunch of 16, 17 year old dudes that are like ripped walking around, you know, and uh, so we had uh, which one? I mean, this one's not even bad. The thing is, they're still married. Uh, but one of my friends uh, ended up, uh, so the year after he graduates, the uh, girls track coach just kind of, you know, switches schools out of nowhere and is pregnant. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know, she might not have been pregnant. I don't know if the timeline adds up on that, but <laughs> they they are still married and I'm pretty sure like uh and he may have been 18 at the time uh I, i'm not for sure where he was at on that one but it was definitely a, a teacher coach student situation there yeah. and then there was always rumors about the school nurse which i think she might have made a move on me one time but i was like 14 and oblivious yeah. i like i was one of those like i was kind of a weird kid i wasn't like all the other guys that were being like shitheads and like I was trying to get a girlfriend, not just like bang random chicks and stuff like that. Same, same, same. I never yeah. really had that, and, like, that drive to be like, just like the, oh, I gotta fuck everything that moves. Yeah. So yeah. So that was a, a weird situation. There was probably there's girls that probably thought I was gay because they were laying it on pretty thick, and I'm just like, we haven't even been on a date yet. We're not, you're not my girlfriend. <laughs> like, what, what's going on? You know, <laughs> I I, like. There were people that were just throwing it at me, and I was just completely oblivious to it back then. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what they were thinking. My my high school was fucked up. Uh, we had the basketball teacher that got arrested for having a girl perform oral sodomy on him, allegedly. Which you when know, you say it like that, it's weird. I know yeah. the meaning is yeah. accurate. That's yeah, that's what they said. <laughs> performed oral sodomy on him. It, yeah, um, I mean, I know that's accurate, but yeah. it is weird to say it like that. And then we had the band director the next year. The next year, 
the band director pushed a student up against the instruments in the instrument closet and fondled her. And then you find out that he was on the run from Oklahoma City for doing something like similarly, and they never did a background check. I think it's probably got to go on a lot more than you would think with band directors, but it's uh, turned her game. Apparently they're just <laughs> apparently they're just better at it or something. I don't know because <laughs> yeah, the, at least he's, at least expect it. Yeah, band trips always just sound like or- orgies. They're always lubed up. Yeah, and then bunch like of, uh, bunch of unattractive year, people <laughs> orgies. <laughs> junior year, we had my Spanish teacher burn down his own Mexican restaurant to try to get the uh, insurance money, and then run. And then senior year, my uh principal shot a former student with a shotgun when he broke into his house accidentally nice yeah like all that happened in my four-year span it was a pretty crazy high school <laughs> yeah i think we had had like by the no school like, shootings though so we're we're still up yeah i mean we had numbers though like yeah. um from the amount of people that died during school and probably the year after was wild uh we had some Kids like uh, go cliff uh, cliff jumping and die like the oh. month after graduation. I think uh, a kid that I think he dropped out of school got hit by a train or Damn. some shit. We had a, a guy die on a motorcycle wreck. We had a guy that fell off a roof and died. Uh, like his right after he graduated. I mean, it was weird how much uh, we had a couple of drunk driving ones. Like it was just, I mean, the amount of students in that first year after graduation were like holy shit do you like attend the same school as final destination or some shit uh yeah it was a bunch of white kids <laughs> did you guys miss death once and then like just came back for you all so we were all on this plane and i was like <laughs> i had this dream i so uh i actually want to get back to uh i used to collect a whole bunch of dvds and blu-rays i had walls and walls of them but i got rid of them all there's a few <laughs> choice ones i want to get back and one of them Oddly, it's Final Destination three. Nice. I don't know. If, I don't know if you ever had that DVD, but it was a Choose Your Own Adventure movie. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's yeah. fun as fuck. Like there's like five different endings, and like they did put a lot of work into it, and it's really fun. It was only for the DVD. Yeah. Netflix released a movie like that a couple yeah, uh, years ago. Uh, Bandersnatch, I think is what's called. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's really cool. I've been working on a a, a joke uh, about about dvds here lately and it's uh basically the premise is like i think uh we're to the point where buying dvds dvds is suspect yeah like if i see you buying a bunch of dvds at a store you clearly have somebody locked in a basement or something <laughs> and it's like why don't you have wi-fi <laughs> yeah it was like you were i mean you you got somebody locked in your basement that's the only reason you've got and you're some sort of monster making them watch all the fast and the furious movies that's like a uh shout out to king castro x he was on here uh he'll be his episode comes out well by the time we're airing this or when we're recording this his episode comes out next week um yeah he's getting into vintage vhs collecting right now and he's not uh, he's, he's either like the art the art of the, like, the actual vhx boxes and stuff like that because there's some cool art on those and the boxes look cool I, I hate to break it to him but rob zombie did it first but yeah he yeah the art is on the wall like, like you know like, well Basically, and there is, uh, you know, and I think he does have a point on this with uh, Rob Zombie uh, doing that. And there's a lot of people wanting physical copies of stuff now. Yeah. Because if you watch, like Disney has went back and edited a lot of their movies. Yeah. Um, and like changed the artwork in the background and stuff like that. Um, there's, uh, but yeah, yeah, they're going back and taking. Serving history. I know. I know movement for it. I know uh, one that. Uh, in ET, I think they take the guns out of the cops' hands and put uh, uh, radios in their hands. Yep, they did that. Yep. Yeah. So, so they they've went back and done stuff like that, trying to. So, I mean, that's kind of a weird deal. The Star Wars trilogy has been recut and redone so many fucking times. Yeah, the, the you know Talladega Nuts has that one scene where he's a kid and steals the car. Mm-hmm. It's not on the DVD. It's not on the DVD that I have of Talladega Nights. It's not in there at all. Deleted scenes, anything. Huh. But it's on the TV version. Like when you watch it on TV, when it comes on TV, I think it's on that one. Huh. So, like, so, there's so many like like uh, Team America World Police, one of my favorite movies. And like yeah. that's back in the day, like, you know, the early 2000s where like when DVDs were starting to be out. 
they were like, you can have the ra- R- rated R version, but you can also have the unrated director's cut version. Right. And yeah. there's so many of those, but now when you go to streaming, they just have the regular version again. They, they got rid of all those unrated versions sometimes. They did it on Morgan or Megan, the Megan, the doll one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got an unrated one on that. It, it's just fewer and far between. <clears throat> you don't see it. Yeah. Like, if you see older movies, they don't carry both versions anymore. If you could try to buy it like on Voodoo or something like that, it just has the regular version. Yeah. Uh, that, world, world Police is such a. It creeped me out when it came out. Like I did not. I don't like the puppets at all. Like, the video, yeah, uh, but the yeah, humor is hilarious. Uh, yeah, I mean the, scene, the puppet sex scene is hilarious. Yeah. And it's but and apparently uh, I've heard that there is like a deleted like the uh, extended sex scene. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the unrated version. They are peeing on each other. Sh- oh my god! Face <laughs> like a Cleveland steamer. It's. I don't everything. know if I've seen that one. It goes full detail on that. Yeah, that's nuts. But again, it's only like another 10, 15 seconds of that montage. Yeah, I really need to go see the Book of Mormon. Like, I, I'm not a, a play dude, but I, I definitely want to go see the Book of Mormon one day. I want to go see that. Just because um, j- Trey Parker and Matt Stone wrote it. I love basketball. Yes, I agreed. wish they would do a. I wish they would do a sequel of basketball. I honestly wish I still, they had a basketball league. <laughs> I've, been, I've been watching older movies here lately back, and I'm like, I like – there's a lot of stuff that's in my vocabulary from these old movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we watched Rocky the other day and it was uh Mick says, I'll kill you to death. And, <laughs> and I like, I say that all the time, but I have no idea where it came from until I watched that movie. And I was like, Holy shit, that's where I got that. That's just like every time I, like I'm always thinking of uh super troopers when you hear like the snozberries taste like snozberries. Oh yeah. It's just, just, super, just like, horrible lines that just always like popped up in your head. That is uh, a genre that is one of my favorites. Just if, like police acting like shitheads. Yeah. Like super, I love Super Troopers. Uh, the Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, yep. I'm rewatching that. Good. That's actually what I'm doing. Like that's what's going on in the background when I'm, I'm writing and stuff. Is Brooklyn Nine Nine? I I'm rewatching yeah. that right now because I never watched the last couple of seasons or the ones when they went to NBC. Yeah, that's just uh, hilarious when you take like cops or so. And uh, the T- Tacoma Fire Department's not bad. Um, it's the same guys from uh, I've Super seen Troopers. Yeah. I haven't watched them. I've seen uh, the, the uh, previews were the commercials. Were. Which that, those guys are uh, comedians too. Uh, mm-hmm. Was it Broken Offerman? Lizard? Yeah. Uh, the new Steve uh, Steve Lemmy and uh, what? Uh, shit, I can't think of Farva's real name. Uh, but uh, uh, not Kevin. but they do Kevin? like a bump. Yeah, yeah, that's probably it. Kevin Sutton, I came here. But yeah, they uh, they do kind of like a bump and mic thing. Where they'll like they'll do. Oh, I love bumper like, mics. Yeah, Jeff Ross is a little weird, but yeah. <laughs> Anything David Tell, I'll watch. Yeah, David Tell's David Tell's awesome. I don't know. I, Jeff Ross kind of weirds me out. I don't know what it is. Jeff the Ross, is I'm good with doses. Like like the Roastmaster yeah. General thing. Like, he is a Roastmaster General, but like sometimes it's like it goes overboard. Especially like that one show. What was it like historical roast or something like that? That was not good. I don't know if yeah. you watched it on Netflix. It was I, I, I tried to watch it. I don't think I got through it. I didn't either. So, like, I got like okay. two minutes on like, oh my god, that, this is bad. That that reminds me of something. So where are you at on Theo Vaughn? <laughs> I'm, I think we're I think I'm we're laughing at a retarded it. person. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I can get him in doses. Like when he's a guest on podcasts, I usually exactly that is exactly what I say. I I, and I like him as a guest on podcasts. I cannot watch him host a podcast and, and, and i know he's probably not ever going to watch this but theo if you ever hear this it's not that i hate you it's more the thing of like i think that everybody has their own niche in comedy and has their own genres and stuff and some people find him very hilarious more props to them oh, me personally I, I just i struggle i went to school with a bunch of rednecks oh. <laughs> that were that were like that and they were all in special ed that's what I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that makes sense uh, yeah i'm like they like not full-time special ed but you know they did like the they went there for one or two periods. Oh, they were just in my family I, reunions. Yeah, that and yeah, Theo Vaughn, like, and I have, I've always uh, asked people like that too. Like, I had a premise, just wrote my joke book one time, which I think it's been done before, so I never even bothered to write a joke. But it was like, would we even know if hot chicks were retarded? Like, I mean, no, we would just go with it. I mean, I mean, it probably work with dudes too. I mean, I know there's good looking dudes that are like completely retarded and girls just, I mean, there were some, there was a senior in my soft girls just 
Love that dude. Like he's in my <laughs> he's two grades behind in English. I don't know if you yeah. know that or not. Well, they're saying now that English the, the English class is pretty much dead now with chat GBT coming out. Uh yeah, I mean that's so easy to cheat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy to cheat in school for kids these days. Yeah. I mean, we actually had to work at it. There's people at the club that were showing me that you could do chat GPT to write help write jokes and stuff. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, get plagiarism on that thing. You know, you know, it's just... I was like, okay, but that yeah, you have fun. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. The, the I've seen some of the jokes that come off of it. They're wild. Yeah. My, my, uh, my roommate, he, Go, like he loves like choose your own adventure like uh he's a dungeon master of like dungeons and dragons stuff like that so like he loves role-playing games stuff like that and he went down the rabbit hole of chat gbt where you can basically do a choose your own adventure story and it'll just make characters and then it'll even retcon and go back like he spent hours like a story about a dad who's 40 and then just did his whole story and then he goes yeah remember that he has a, a young son and it goes and backtracks and it fixes the entire story and retcons it to where he t every single oh, sample nice. also mentions that he had a oh. son. It just does it automatically. Yeah, that's they're uh, they're gonna use that uh, Mandela effect or some shit. Pretty much, like he's, <laughs> yeah, he's, but... he's using it now. Like he's thinking about using it for like uh, making dungeon campaigns, like just putting all the characters yeah. in there and stuff, and just having it spit out a campaign, and he can play Dungeons and Dragons pretty easily with it now. Yeah, that's that's kind of scary. They'll they'll use that thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're still, I really recommend watching. Uh, I don't know if you've watched the last week tonight with John Oliver ever, but uh, uh, it's on HBO. Um, he had an episode last Sunday about AI and you know people freaking out about if it's going to take over or not, and it's kind of like the discussion of what the, our AI is like now versus what that would take to even do that. And he kind of yeah. goes through like what Chat GPT is and how it works and how it's basically just a dumb AI. Like it only does whatever we input, and that's it. Right. Yeah. It's not going to be self sufficient. <laughs> Yeah, it's general intelligence versus artificial intelligence. Yeah, it is funny. It is funny how quick they go racist, and on, on the robots. I mean, yeah, like the one from Microsoft. Yeah, I mean that, and then with the Google bots or whatever, were started talking to a code that the that you couldn't recognize. Yep. They like they started talking to each other in their own code. And you're like, oh shit! Well, Microsoft put one up on Twitter, and it lasted less than twenty hours, because yeah, it is to being happy racist. to just full on Nazi racist shit yeah that's that uh crazy and then there was the uh the bing one that said they wanted to kill themselves but they didn't yeah, want to exist they... anymore and like yeah that's not nice. that's creepy <laughs> yeah there's long. always yeah i mean and there will always always be shitheads to try to freaking input those ais to cause chaos and stuff like that i mean i know i just want to be like the one guy that like programs all the refrigerators to moan randomly it would so it will make the the facial recognition one. It will make my idea that'll never happen. Uh, but I always I, I love this idea of uh, so I want a movie studio uh, like Judd Apatow or something like that. Just say like you know how he has all these this is forty and all these you know movies that are all similar that Judd Apatow makes. Uh, I want him to make the, make a movie. And then at the same time, like when they're making the movie, the lead character change him out. So like have Jason Bateman do the scene and then redo that exact scene with like Paul Rudd. And then so shoot that whole movie, basically every scene that they're in twice and then release it one movie to half the country and then to the other half of the country. Oh. release the other one. <laughs> that is so good. It's kind of people... like what they do with advertisements and they have different nationalities in them depending on where they send them out. Oh yeah, we've been yeah, we've been doing that for a long time. Targeted ads have been around forever. Yeah, but like do the exact same movie with two different actors and just I mean people would probably kill each other over it because like yeah. you know that movie with <laughs> you know that movie with Paul Rudd? Like no, that was <laughs> Jason Bateman and they're like no, it was Paul Rudd. I watched it. Like it was definitely <laughs> Like wanna, a, that'd be an awesome prank to do on the whole freaking country, the whole world. And honestly, if man, you, I think Paul Rudd would be one person that'd be into it. Oh yeah. 
Or you get, yeah, that, oh, dude, do some people that look really close to people confuse them all the time. Do like Jared Little and Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Yeah, that would work too. People confuse those in movies all the fucking time. Just, or like two actresses or something like that. Just like have some, just to have confusing one. I don't know. Isn't that the, isn't it Maggie Gyllenhaal that's in the second Batman? That, that pisses me like that. I hate that they the can't. Act. Yeah, it's it's nuts I, when they switch characters like that. Well, Katie Holmes got married to Tom Cruise and went to Scientology during that time. Was that what happened? Yep, she was married to Tom Cruise. Yeah, good call on that one. Why haven't we ever seen Tom Cruise as a superhero? I mean, we pretty much have every Mr. Impossible movie he does, or any much any yeah, movie he does. produces now, because he is the, he's the only way he can get movies done is if he's producing it so they can cover the insurance and shit. <laughs> I mean, so you probably know that Nick Cage was supposed to be Superman, right? Yep. But the Tim yeah. Burton. Yeah, yeah. Tim Burton was going to do a Superman around what is it, Batman Forever? Uh, and Superman I, lives. Yeah, yeah. Around that time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. ninety six. Yeah. yeah, and then what? Well, Kevin Smith was involved with it too, wasn't he? Yep. Was he, wrote, he wrote. He wrote a draft of it, and then he had to take it to the producer. And there's a huge famous story about that, of like him yeah. having to pitch it to that that producer. There's there's pictures of long haired Nick Cage in a Superman suit. That would have been weird. Well, uh, the story goes, uh, the producer on the movie, I can't remember his name, but he had conditions. And before Kevin Smith could get the role or the the spot for being a writer, he had to go up to this guy's house, his mansion, and like pitch him this this idea. So he gets up to it, and, and like the guy's house looks like Wayne Manor. It's like a huge mansion. And he yeah. gets in there, and the dude wants to lay on the couch and go like this, and like just picture the frame like he's a director, like he's envisioning nice. this thing. And he says, "I have three rules. Number one, I don't want to see that fucking guy fly. Number two, I don't want to see him in that fucking suit because, and I quote, he lo- it looks faggy. <laughs> and number three, in the third yeah. act, he has to fight a giant spider. Nice. Rich people are weird. And Kevin Smith was like, okay, I can." handle the first two but the third one kind of intrigues me and he's like well i've always pictured like you remember king kong like the old 30s one and that yeah. scene where they open the big gates kind of like jurassic park and kong comes out and the whole audience goes oh it's like the first time you've seen him he goes i want that yeah. like, superman movie with a spider nice and basically the whole no thing sense. the guy was insane and it, it never even worked out and then tim burton came in and like had his own crew of writers and stuff so kevin spent this whole draft and work and worked for this idiot for a while and it was all for nothing yeah, is and, it the the family that owns the rights to Superman? A real pain in the ass, isn't it? Like that's why the Superman action figure is always so hard to get a hold of. And yeah, they're, they're all the rights are fucked up on them. Like, and then they're argued for decades too between the different rights. Um, right, and they always like that's why there's always tweaking him and everything. Yeah. But that was the best. The, the best part of that story was uh that guy's idea about having the spider in the movie in the third act. It didn't come to fruition because Tim Burton got involved, right? Well, the yeah. next movie he made, Kevin Smith went to go see, and it was called The Wild Wild West. Oh, no, with the giant spider? The giant spider's so ending. Yeah. <laughs> and Kevin Smith's like, yeah. I'm in the theater watching this giant piece of shit, and all of a sudden, a fucking spider shows up. <laughs> the guy that originally played Jim West did, said some racist shit about Will Smith playing. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I, used to, a, I watch that movie all the time. There's a... Uh, there's a animated movie called batman superman like public enemies or something like that it's an animated dc comic or comic movie it's actually really good mm-hmm. but there's a scene where like a giant spider or something like that comes in and there's an, an there's an animated kevin smith and he's voicing himself and he's on like a pedestrian on the street and he goes why the hell is that in here or something like that in a superman yeah. movie or why is superman fighting a giant spider and it's like a joke oh that makes joke. sense yeah you uh you know what nick cage's youngest son's name is uh-uh. Cal L. Yep. <laughs> as soon as you asked it, I said no. It immediately popped in my head. Like I've heard that. Yep. Yeah, his uh, he's got an Asian son named Cal L. Of course he does. Yeah, it, you should have seen. I've been trying to. I don't know why. I'm terrible at. I'm. I spent a a good bit of time making a damn clip about. We were we were watching. We were doing the podcast, and there was a uh, Weston Cage Coppola is in. Uh, 211 with Nick Cage, and uh, uh, he's done some movies with him, but this is one where he's an adult. He looks so much like Big J Okerson, <laughs> and I mean, I was like, it looks just like him. So, and Big J, I don't know if you watched the Bonfire, but yeah. he he used to 
him and Dan Soder were going uh, big on SantaCon, uh, like how he, there was some deal that I think a SantaCon dude pissed in New his York. hallway. Yeah, in New York. And how Big J hates it when SantaCon comes to New Everybody York. Everybody hates SantaCon New York. It's a fucking public menace. Oh, yeah. And, but yeah, I think Big J, I think one of them pissed in his hallway and he got pissed at him and threw him through a window or some shit. But <laughs> the, but I made a video of Weston Cage Coppola, who looks just like Nick Cage, shooting Santa Claus <laughs> on Instagram. I put it on Instagram and Facebook and, and uh, Twitter and all that stuff. But it, it's, it's freaking hilarious. I, and I thought I was like, man, surely this is going to blow up. But it still, still doesn't have a lot of views. But it's hilarious. Because <laughs> there was a, I cut it in a, a clip of SantaCon with the movie clip and then there's a, a, a black Santa walking through a neighborhood and somebody shoots him with a BB gun in the back. Oh. <laughs> we'll go ahead and start it real quick with the, the preheat. preheat. Oh, it's hot. So on the preheat, I grew up fat and it's one of those things where I like to learn and figure out the burns for myself before they could be used as ammo against me. So it's kind of like a burn before the burns kind of thing. Um, the way the sub the segment works is I will have viewers send in disgusting, homophobic, you know, racist tweets to me and stuff like that, or comments about my appearance. Oh, I'll nice. read them on air, but the catch is they have to send a photo of themselves so that I can retort. Oh, all right. So they'll only get the trolls will only get you know some publicity if I can retort back to them. I haven't got anything back, but if you guys want to send your comments to the preheat and for some reason it is not working you can send them to the unloading meat at gmail.com subject preheat and again include a photo of yourself and i will read them on air your best roast jokes about me guys uh that being said i don't have any viewer mail yet because we haven't had too many submissions yet we're still starting out the channel do you have any roast jokes for me off the top of your head or anything you want to say <laughs> it's an open uh, floor. I like to have my guest. You can roast me any way you want to close the show. Oh shit! Uh, no, I mean not on the spot. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, a tattooed Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. That one's good. I like uh, that. One. <laughs> I like that one. You look like uh, somebody printed a coloring book on play doh. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <That was good>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. You honestly, you look like. Oh, hang on. Go ahead. <laughs> There's a better way to say this one. Oh, hang on. I mean, there's a John Claude Van Damme joke in here. I know it. You, you got the ponytail. I mean, you. <laughs> what can, I got one for you. Okay. What can be said about you that hasn't been said about the book My Two Dads? What's that? Oh, well, that was just the joke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, which one's my two dads? Oh man. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a new segment we're working on. Once we get the viewer mail going, the, the the goal is to bring them up. And when I have guests, like you guys can riff on them too. But yeah, when the, when you come, like, I, I, hopefully you'd love to come back, and hopefully I'll be on your show, and you'll be on, in the studio too. Oh yeah. Times. But like, I like to have the just the fun way to close the show is just like riffing on each other, just have some fun roast, kind of like an insult battle a little bit. Or mostly yeah. it'll go over the viewers when we actually get it. Nice. Yeah. When they send in some videos and stuff like yep. that. Yeah. I th I'm worried about my podcast is uh, uh, there's a couple of them where I'm getting subscribers and stuff from like India. Yep. <laughs> like, my co my podcast is going to get huge in another country. And Dude, I was like, that you get some weird ones, man. I got one from uh, it went in Peru. It was somewhere in South America. But it was a random one. It was just like, I was like okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I keep getting subscribers from people there. I can't pronounce their name. And <laughs> from uh, a lot of them, were like in, uh, I don't know, Ghost Rider blew up. And I, I think Ghost Rider is like my biggest podcast. It's got like 10, 15,000 uh, views. Damn. And it's, I think if you look at the analytics, they're mostly from India. <laughs> they're like, what the? And I'm pretty sure I'm just helping them pirate movies. Yeah. They're probably, I don't know. But, I can't imagine that they're sitting there listening to me. Just remaking them in Bollywood. Yeah. You just give them the blueprint. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've gotten away with it. I mean, the camera is pointed at the TV the whole time. It's just, and the audio is there. They might be able to have a, I mean, you can kind of get it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, to each their own, I guess, unless you're getting, I mean, you're getting views and you're not getting copyright struck. And I guess they're getting something out of it too. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, where can they find you, man? So uh, Adam is not funny videos on YouTube. Uh, check that out. I've got the two podcasts. Got the Playing Your Fools podcast. If you uh, want to hear a shithead talk about some serious subjects that I weirdly know a lot about, um, I've done some on uh, police, economics, uh, stuff like that. Um, that one's pretty fun. Uh, and then uh, there were some of your local comedians and stuff have been on there a couple times uh, from Fort Smith. Um, then Adam is not funny on Instagram and Twitter. There's a lot of stand. There's some stand up clips and stuff like that. You can find me on there. Awesome, man. Well, do you got any shows coming up soon or when are you going to be in Tulsa next? <sighs> no, I haven't really got anything planned. Um, I'm just going to bring in, keep hitting the open mics and stuff. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I'll get booked some in Tulsa. That's kind of, I've been coming out there. Maybe I'll get some booked on some shows. I haven't been booked a lot here lately, which um, I mean, I've been, I did, quite a bit of shows the last two or three months in, in Fort Smith, but I'm trying to get booked in these surrounding areas and stuff like that more often. Uh, but as of right now, I don't have anything. Just keep an eye out for the podcast and, and I'll usually post shows on Instagram and stuff like that. River Valley comics. Um, those are all my friends. Uh, we have a show once a month at Fort Smith brewing company. Um, it last few shows have been sold out. It's turned out great. We have over a hundred people there uh, nice. and having to turn away people at the door a lot of times. So, um, that's, that's been great. Uh, so, uh, check out river Valley comics on Facebook and, and check out those shows. Well, man, uh, if I ever get out to Fort Smith, I would love to have you show me around and like, maybe we can plan something where I can go out there for, uh, and hit some shows with you. Yeah, that will be fun. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, man. It really means a lot. Thank you so much for comping on. This has been awesome. Oh, yeah. Thanks uh, for having me. Thank you for joining us on Unloading Meat, guys. Take care. Bye. Have a great time.